regularly asked about water resistance with respect to timepieces to really understand what is happening with water resistance and a timepiece you have to think in the form of pressure there are many things that lead to pressure on a timepiece whether it's internal pressure or external pressure and this can come from going deep underwater or from traveling up in an airplane. Air will change in volume based on the pressure. Liquid will not. And this is the problem we have with a wristwatch. There is air inside of a wristwatch. And so, added pressure by going underwater will actually cause the air, in the case of your watch, to decrease in volume. Traveling higher by plane or climbing a mountain, anything that gets you higher in elevation will cause the air inside of the wristwatch to increase in volume. What we have is atmospheric pressure that decreases as you travel up and increases as you travel down. That paired with the force of water on your watch when you are underwater can lead to the ingress of liquid into a watch case. When the pressure decreases on the outside of a watch and increases on the inside of the watch, you could have a crystal pop off of a watch. You could have air escaping out of the crown of the watch. And this is because the pressure is always attempting to equalize between what's inside of the watch and outside of the watch. In addition, you also have pressures that change Due to temperature, warming will cause an increase in pressure. So if you take a warm watch and you put it into cold water, it will try to contract, which could actually bring moisture into the watch. And the opposite is true as well. All of these pressure changes can lead to those occurrences where you might be inside of a building and you walk outside and your watch has a little bit of moisture inside, some humidity on the inside of the crystal. That sort of condensation or moisture can happen on vintage watches because either they are no longer airtight or watertight, or maybe they weren't designed to be watertight or airtight in the first place. As you could imagine, an older watch that has no rubber gaskets in it and is not designed to be airtight, should not be exposed to water or moisture or big temperature swings. A timepiece like that would be perfectly fine traveling up in an airplane because it will be able to equalize the pressure outside the watch with the pressure inside the watch because air can flow freely. When we start dealing with watches such as dive watches, when you had the Blanc Palm 50 Fathoms, the Rolex Submariner, you start to see a shift where we now have issues with the pressure not being able to equalize because these watches were designed to be watertight. So then we need to make sure that the crystal is retained tightly enough that when traveling by airplane or going up in elevation by another means, the crystal will not pop off the front of the watch. So these are things that then need to be engineered into the crystal and the crown and the case back to make sure that those pressure changes do not cause a crystal to unseat itself, leading to water resistance problems 
down the line. When you travel deep underwater with a wristwatch, the watch itself will actually flex. It will compress. And a very well sealed watch does not necessarily mean it will have a deep rating for water resistance because it needs structural rigidity as well because you will have more pressure outside of the watch compressing that small volume of air inside of the watch. If the watch was filled with liquid, it would be incompressible, meaning it would not compress from depth. However, a mechanical watch won't run if you fill it with water or oil. So we have a small volume of air that compresses with a large amount of pressure on the outside of the watch, which is actually able to bend case backs and crack crystals. And that is usually the reason that we have a depth rating, not necessarily because the seals themselves will fail, but because the case is not rigid enough. With temperature swings and pressure changes, when the pressure increases or the volume of the air inside of the watch grows, you will have air escaping from the watch. And then as that changes back to where it was before, you will have air trying to get back into the watch. This is why big temperature changes where you're involving water and moisture or humidity can lead to humid, damp, wet air going into a watch, even if it is watertight, the transfer of air with moisture in it can still happen. This is why with a dive specific watch, we always test to make sure that even damp air is not making its way into a watch. And we do that by warming up a watch that has been kept at pressure underwater when that watch is warmed up, if we add a drop of cold water to the front crystal, we hope to see no condensation inside. If that cold water causes condensation to form inside, that means that wet air made its way into the case. So it wouldn't fail underwater, but later on in the day, you might find that your watch has fogged up. And this is something that we can't have with a dive watch that is expected to go underwater for long periods of time and over and over and over again without fail. One of the problems that was discovered many years ago with dive watches was that air bubbles of certain gases could actually make their way into the watch cases. And this doesn't happen when you're diving in a wet environment, meaning the wristwatch is on your wrist and it's underwater. This will, however, happen if you are in a dry suit where the watch is covered with a dry suit or if you are in a chamber. These are two things that are not typical of standard recreational diving. And what happens is you have molecules that are able to work their way into the watch gaskets, through the gaskets and into the watch. Molecules like helium. And this helium, we have the same issue with nitrogen that we're breathing. We can get nitrogen narcosis if we are at depth, which means nitrogen is actually too concentrated and it's almost like you are inebriated. These same nitrogen molecules can actually make their way into your joints, your bloodstream, places they wouldn't normally fit because on land, they're this large. And when you go underwater, they shrink from pressure and they can get into places we don't want them, just like helium. 
when they get into places we don't want them, and then we ascend too quickly, they will grow. And in the case of your joints, that would make for what we call the bends, where that molecule increases in size rapidly and it hasn't dissipated yet, so it actually causes pain. We also have molecules that can make their way into a wristwatch. And this is usually when a diver is in a decompression chamber because they've been breathing some sort of mixed gas or using a rebreather so that they've been down so long that they've absorbed so many of these molecules into their bloodstream and into their joints and places they should not be. And they have to take a decompression stop. And it's a stop that's so long that they are actually in a chamber. And they'll stop in that chamber and breathe a different mixture for a period of time in order for their body to get rid of things like nitrogen where it shouldn't be. During that time, their watch will actually absorb other gases. And what will happen is, as those grow, the watch will actually explode. The crystal will pop off unless there is some sort of relief valve. And this is why many dive watches traditionally come with a helium escape valve. It's completely unnecessary for diving in a wet environment without a stop in one of these decompression chambers because you're not gonna get any gas going into your watch when you're wet. So recreational divers do not need this helium escape valve. It's really for commercial divers and people who are using different equipment in order to stay deeper, longer, uh, and usually for commercial reasons, such as uh, scientific discoveries, maybe for photographing or documenting certain species and having to live in an underwater chamber for a period of time in order to do that, or staying down for an entire day to weld a pipeline and then having to be in a chamber for a period of time in order to recover before surfacing. This is why that helium escape valve exists. It's all about the pressure building in the watch when a certain gas is able to make its way in and then cannot find another way out without popping the crystal off. And that's the same thing that could happen traveling in an airplane if the crystal is not properly retained. Because pressure has always been the most important part of making a watch water resistant, you will see that in the past, many watches were actually marketed good for a certain number of bars or atmospheres even. And this is because it wasn't always thinking about keeping water out. It starts with pressure and changes in pressure from the inside and the outside of a watch. Pressure is where it all starts, whether it's air or water. Either one can cause your watch to have a problem. Thank you.